Welcome back to Mudgee. We're going to be here for the next couple of days ahead of what is going to be a massive weekend for this uh, beautiful part of Australia. I want to thank John and all of the team here at the uh, Lawson Park Hotel. Lovely location. Uh, it's going to be open till midnight, so we'll have a good hour on the pokies, uh, which I'm sure he'll be more than happy when I lose, lose, lose uh, in the next uh, couple of minutes' time, like I have been on the dogs all night long. Now, as you know, I love Holden. I bleed red. Holden doesn't exist anymore, but there was a chance that Holden was going to find a way to keep going. But instead of uh, selling American cars, instead of selling Australian-built cars, there was apparently a plan for them to be rebadging Chinese-made cars. Imagine that. We love football, meat pies, kangaroos and Chinese-made Holden cars. James McGar is a senator for the LNP. He is joining us now from Canberra. Senator, you've been uh, relentless into this particular topic about the collapse of, uh, of Holden and about the behaviour of General Motors in the United States back towards us. So how close did we come to Holden just being rebadged Chinese cars? Uh, very close. And, and General Motors are a pack of liars. Uh, I asked questions of some of the General Motors executives at a parliamentary hearing last year, and they danced around the questions and gave some fluffy answers, because my fear all along has been that, that General Motors, now that they've retired the Holden brand, can sell it to anyone in the world. They can sell it like MG. MG is owned by a Chinese state-owned company. There's nothing to stop General Motors from selling the Holden brand to a Chinese state-owned company. But guess what? We find out on the weekend that they came very close to putting the Holden badge on cars made in China. So the only thing that would have been Holden about these cars would have been a badge stuck on the front of the car. Now, General Motors are a pack of liars and it's and it's not, it's not too late for General Motors to actually still sell the brand to, to, to China or, or lease it to China. And it's why I've been hot to trot saying, well, give the brand back to Australia. I wrote to the president of General Motors and said, I'll buy it off you for a dollar, not because it's worthless, but because it's priceless and we'll look after the brand because I don't want it ending up over in, in China. So what do they see as the benefit of holding on to the brand? Um, do they see that there's, I don't know, sort of uh, the spare parts, old merchandise, some reason? Because if they're not planning to put that badge on a car, then what is the value to the car maker here? Well, well, the answer that was given to me in the committee hearing was they want to stick, they want to hold on to the, the Holden brand for 10 years because of that very issue of spare parts. But... Hang on, if you're not making Holden cars, you're not actually using the Holden badge, then it's sort of, you know, metaphorically just sitting on a shelf somewhere in, in General Motors headquarters in, in Detroit. So I suspect that in a year or two's time, they will sell the brand to a Chinese state-owned company or it could be a company in Africa or it could be anywhere, but they will sell it or lease it away because it is an asset and they will want to make money out of the Holden brand. Otherwise, why are they keeping on to it? Why are they holding on to it? They know because they can make a fast buck now, out of it in a couple of years' time. Now, I, you know, I love your passion to follow this story through because, look, we all know that the cost of manufacturing, the union contracts, we know that people weren't buying certain types of cars anymore. Um, and But... The, the importance of a um, link to national identity, the ability to build a car, is something that sadly is lost. I know we've got a lot of other design things that are, that are there at the moment. But the behaviour of General Motors in, in, in the final months of the Holden brand is something that you have been investigating. And I was having a chat to a couple of mates that, uh, that sell cars for a living and, um, you know, they used to be part of the Holden family and now they're desperately trying to uh, find somewhere to be selling cars or other brands or other dealerships. How many people do you think have been just left at sea as a result of the Holden decision, the way that uh, GM did that Holden decision? Oh, well, well, how many people? 26 million of them, 26 million Australians. But actually, when you, when you go down to granular detail, so many country towns, you know, probably the one you're in at the moment, Mudgee, would have, a, would have had a Holden dealership. It would have been one of the largest private employers in that town. It would have trained up apprentices. It would have made sure it would have been a, it would have sponsored the footy club. It would have done, it would have been a vibrant part of a vibrant community. But what they've done is, is that they've, they've disenfranchised 
a, a large segment of, of the Australian population, and they've really just trashed the Holden brand. And that, that is really, really sad, because what's happened is General Motors have acted just appallingly in the way they've treated the dealers. The power and balance between the manufacturers and the dealers is immense. And I know it's something that, that, that Minister Cash is, is looking into. It's something that a committee that, that I'm sitting on is also looking into, because how the Holden dealers, they, they were just brutally treated. You would, not, you would not treat your worst enemy how General Motors treated those Holden dealers. Holden dealers who'd been so loyal to General Motors over for almost 80 years. It was absolutely disgraceful. Thank you so much, James. Keep up the fight. Do appreciate it, mate. We'll see you again soon. Nice. Thank you. Cheers.